it kind of came together out of dad's passion. So it's kind of unique that he grew it from a very small 248 acre to what it is today. It was one man's dream to buy the right property. It had to roll right, it had to drain right, it had to have good grass, it had to get good soil, it had to be just right. We grow grass here that's the best in the world. The soil's really deep, it's really rich. There's just enough roll to the land and some of the views are just amazing. Waking up when you're working here at Lane's End, it's not like going to work. It's like waking up at Augusta, getting ready to go out and play a, a round of golf just in a different industry. But as they come to the line, King Mambo went to St. James's Ballot State. He was a hands-on horseman. He rode himself, was a gifted polo player, knew horses from the ground up, followed that, and the success was really wonderful. It's a tribute to him. When it comes to generations and history and breeding, there's nobody more well-versed than he is. It was his home. He was very proud of it. I'm not sure anybody cared about a piece of land more than he cared about this piece of land. I think it's been the focus of his life, really, for the last 40 years. So to see it pan out the way it has, it's got to be very satisfying for him. He was all about the horse from a very early age, and somehow I think it's just in our, our family DNA. He and mom went and looked at the house here at the farm, and which was then sitting on just 250 acres. That was in the late 70s. It's quite a project when they first acquired it because it was in, in very bad disrepair, but they just loved the location. I think Mr. Farish had a very clear vision of what he wanted the place to look like. The original 240 acres was in the middle of what they call the carrot patch around here for raising horses. And uh, we wanted to create a marriage between aesthetics and, and actually the betterment of the horse. All the paddocks have curved corners on it and they're beautifully laid out. And so when we were laying out Wardship Down and Kiltynan, I very, very much thought of how they had done it, and I tried to kind of copy what Will Farish had done. It all kind of did happen pretty quickly. Four years from buying the first piece of land, they built three original barns uh, at the same time. We had a yearling barn, two broodmare barns, and, and that was it, so it was a lot smaller operation then. We all knew each other pretty well. We'd, we'd known each other socially, most of the guys that, that came to work here and uh, all had, you know, all ambitions to, to aspire to be the biggest and the greatest, you know, so we, it was a fun time. I don't think he can do things halfway very well, so certainly no stallions back then, but within four years he was standing stallions and growing the broodmare band significantly. First three stallions were Hero's Honor, Fit to Fight, and Dixieland Band we picked up at Mr. Sharp's farm. And on that trip home, we also picked up Weekend Surprise from Del Carroll, Young Del. Dixieland Band was owned by my grandfather, was by Northern Dancer, a good dirt horse, won the Massachusetts Handicap, and he was certainly uh, a, a neat horse to start out with. AP Indy was foaled on the farm. Weekend had had a foal before that. He was a star from the beginning. I remember at the summer sale when he sold, you know, he topped the sale that year. It was exciting. When he was being broken at Bill Harrigan's, he was kind of that head of the class all the way along in that group. And then when Neil Drysdale got him out in California, same thing, he, he knew he was special. AP Indy on the outside and Dance Lord joining the fray at the rail. For a horse 
like him to win a grade one at two was, you know, a, a real surprise and you know, bode, you know, it was pretty exciting for what lay ahead with his three-year-old career. He culminated his career in the Breeders' Cup, and he won that very easily. Generally, we used to go around with him so, not, so he wouldn't get into any trouble, because um, we knew we had a superior horse. I discussed it with Eddie De La Husi and said, look, you can go through today. AP Indy is finding his best stride, and he's moving powerfully in between horses as they move. And he touched him with the whip, and boom, he was gone. <laughs> AP Indy in front, pleasant tap. This is the big one. This is the one we've been waiting for. You know, the ultimate goal is to produce a horse like AP and E. So, you know, it was kind of a prolonged dream, really. His success and then his subsequent success as a broodmare sire and his just, in, you know, incredible influence on the breed. I remember like it was yesterday when AP Indy arrived. I hadn't seen him since he was a yearling. And when he walked off the van and up the, up the path here to the barn, we were just so impressed that he had matured as much as he had. And, and he had the wow factor, whatever you want to call it. You just knew that horse was going to be special. Well, he had stamina. And that's what was lacking in the breeding shed in the United States. As soon as the foals started arriving, everybody started to rave about them. What more? You could certainly go for a long time in this business and have a very successful run and not have a horse of that stature. But it's incredibly satisfying to dad to have bred a horse like him and, and then to have stood him. Everything we did here, it seems like to me, reverts back to AP Indy. Maybe he wasn't the first success we had, but certainly he was. Uh, he got us off to a pretty good, to a pretty good start. It was one man's dream to buy the right property. It had to roll right. It had to drain right. It had to have good grass. It had to get good soil. It had to be just right. And then his vision was to stand world-class stallions. It also takes a heck of a lot of luck to come up with top stallions like we've been fortunate enough to have. I think about a lot of those horses a lot. You know, there's constant reminders around here. There's statues of most of them. We gradually grew the broodmare band in quality and size. For myself to just watch all of that evolve was a pretty amazing thing to see how he put it all together. And then it worked. You know, it worked. Thank you, Dan. Three million one. Three million, three million one, three million, three. One, two million, hundred thousand, and a uh, winner on the right. Thank you for two million. We're talking about it. At two million three, two million four. Here you get three, you get four hundred, and two million five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred. Probably one of the most incredible days I've ever experienced. We sold 45 horses for $45 million in, in one day. Just an outer body experience. I mean, it was just amazing to watch. That was a really special day, you know. If a horse went to the ring and didn't bring a million dollars, it came back to the barn and you were, ah, that one didn't sell very well. <laughs> two million two, two million two, three, two million three, four, two million three, four, five. Uh, now he's out again, two million five. The stars just aligned and 
It was, it was magic. To sell 45 million yearlings for the whole year is, is amazing. But in one day, I remember Mike and I just sitting in the seats, not even knowing whether to smile or, you know, as, a, as another one would come through. It, it was just incredible. Two to another three, last call in the front. Four million two is in the back. Do it a bit, four million three. Two to another three, try three. Four million two, four million three hundred and... Uh, sold that gorgeous mare in the back for four million two hundred. Wait a minute, folks. Let's get her outside before we give a round of applause. Here we do everything for the horse. Raising horses is our job here on the farm. The comfort that horses seem to derive being raised here just bodes well for their racing success when they leave here. We could be looking at a new superstar out here, Candy Ride. The factor is all. Union Rags unleashing a furious rally. Twirling Candy, pounding up on the outside of the track. Daredevil with a sparkling performance. Game winner, a champion. City of Light keeps going, and City of Light will win it. Liam's map just keeps striding forward. Utter gold, got him in the last stride. Accelerate wins the Breeders' Cup Classic. Classy, consistent, quality road. Mineshaft, routinely brilliant to win here at Belmont Park once again. Mineshaft was the son of A.P. Andy, out of a mare named Prospector's Delight, who was one of our foundation mares. He actually went over to England with mom and dad when he was ambassador. It's kind of a running joke in the family that he might have won the Kentucky Derby if Dad hadn't been named Ambassador Daniel. But he was with John Gosden and certainly was a bit of a fish out of water over there being an AP Indy on the grass. Although Mineshaft broke his maiden in England, John told Mr. Farish that Mineshaft needs to go back to America. He felt that he needs to be on the main track, on the dirt. Imagine that the most beautiful AP Indy out of a Mr. Prospect, the mare, the perfect horse, and he's urging Mr. Farish to send him back to America. You know, we were all anxious to see him run on the dirt, and it was a real, real thrill for Dad, for all of us. Success came immediately. He had everything. Mineshaft, a dominating victory. Won it by two lengths. He could have won by a bit more than that, and Mineshaft the beat goes on for him, a potential champion in the making here. What a reaction from Wait. the crowd. Mineshaft, this is for Mineshaft as he goes by. He's almost getting a standing ovation as he jogs by the grandstand here. Mineshaft, routinely brilliant to win here at Belmont Park once again. He has won the Jockey Club Gold Cup and he has done it with style. I'm just so happy now that I had a chance to experience it with a horse like that, it was just unbelievable. It really, really gave you a feel for how fabulous it, it is with a horse like him. It, it, it's just a whole different, you live in a whole different life. The broodmare band, a lot of them are families that we've had over the years that Mr. Farish has developed. We've got generations of mares that he's raised. Some of the mares that we've had around since they were foals, I'm 20 years old now, you know, you know, you know everything about them. We knew taking an icon like Zenyatta, it's a responsibility. It was amazing when she came in through Mr. Farish's gate, police escort and Sally Vans and Mike and Bill and the Mosses and 
so many people in the press. It was just kind of like, wow, this is pretty cool. How much love does everyone have for her? I mean, everyone loves Zenyatta. They continuously want to know what she's doing, you know, what her offspring are doing. So she's, you know, well loved. It was a real change for us because people come daily to view the stallions, but they don't come to view the mares. And, and everybody wants to see Zenyatta. People still send her cards and letters. To live in a place that looks like Augusta and have Zenyatta living in your backyard, I mean, it's just amazing. We've raised a lot of really good horses, but I think we've produced a lot of good horsemen too. I started off as a groom, grooming horses in the yearling barn 30 years ago. And we've had so many people come up through the ranks and I'm a newcomer here. There are guys here that have been here 40 years. I'm just proud to be part of it. I came here as a young 20 something and Mike Klein asked me one day if I knew Will Farish, and I said, well, yes, I've, you know, I've heard of him, but he said, well, he's building a really nice farm up the road. I think he'd be, he'd be a good opportunity for you. And little did I know that I would end up working my, my career, you know, for the Farishes. That's one of the neat things about having a farm for a long period of time. We've gotten better help by being open to training people along their career path and encouraging their career path. And Mike Klein was a big part of that. We were fortunate to be able to attract young, bright guys that bought into our idea of how the place ought to run. When you look at what Lane's Inn has done, the people that have worked here, who wouldn't want to come work for a place like this? They definitely have put me in the places to be where I am today, and I couldn't have done that without working here. I loved working at the farm and mistraining horses, of course, but I, I knew I was working for the right people. One of the perks I work in here, you're not really sure who's gonna come through the door next. Countless celebrities, athletes, the Queen of England, was a pretty big deal for a small town guy like me. And like I said, you never know who Mr. President's. Well, obviously, you know, there have been a lot of celebrities here. The Queen, President Bush, that was pretty impressive. I was in the Earling Barn one day and he came jogging through and <laughs> yeah, that really happened. She's visited five times. Just about everything went wrong at <laughs> one time or another but she takes it all in stride and has got a great sense of humor. I think I've said the joke enough people get sick of hearing it. I said I'm the only stall mucker in America that's got a picture of him with the president and him with the queen on his mantle. I always said that just about everything good that happened to myself and my family was a result of working here at Lane's End. Mr. and Mrs. Farish and the Farish family gave me a career that most people can only dream of. He's a wonderful man, as everybody knows. He's a man of his word, and he's a down-to-earth, have-fun kind of guy that could you know, mingle with the hot walkers and the Queen Angle. I just knew I was working for a really good guy. We talked about what his vision was for the farm. He knew exactly how he wanted this place to look. And our job was pretty simple. We just went along with what his vision was. Mr. Farish, you know, he, he loves the sport. He loves his horses, loves the land. And it's so good to the people. It's, it's really, an honor to work for him. I think Bill's continuing on, getting exciting young stallions. You know, we're starting off great with 
honor code, Liam's map. You know, twirling candy's a little older, but he's still exciting. My role is try to stay out of the way and communicate the less than great news to people sometimes and you know, look for the next top stallion. And that's, that's really what we try to do and never lose sight of who really makes it happen. As aggressive as Bill and Lane's in have been on acquiring new stallions, I think this will continue for generations, which is a good thing because they're very active in the industry. Mr. Farish was, and you know, Bill following his footsteps as being head of the Breeders' Cup, and then, you know, he's a trustee at Keeneland now too, which I think is a very good thing. I don't know that any of us had any idea that Lane's in would be what has turned into be a perennial leading breeder in a worldwide stallion farm and thoroughbred farm, but we grew with it and it's been a good ride. The love of the horses, not just one horse, of all of them, I think that's what they've ingrained in us and maybe we can help the next generation have that same appreciation and hard work and keep, keep things going. This place is always going to continue to flourish and, you know, we were fortunate to surround ourselves with clients and partners that shared our vision and I expect more of the same as, uh, as they move forward. One thing about this business is you never know it all and the minute you think you do, you know, you're, you're going to get passed by. So I think you have to keep innovating and you can learn something new every day if you if you have your ears open and yeah, that's that's certainly what we try to do